Hello and welcome to the third video in this latest build. Thank you for all of the messages, kind of wishing me well. I think a lot of us are in the same condition where after such a long time in various lockdowns, uh, we're getting a bit of cabin fever and it's been a nice to have something like this to play with. Now, this has probably taken me from start to finish about eight or nine days to build out. That wasn't full time, that was kind of doing it two or three hours every day uh, when I was in the mood to do the next bit. So it's been a great distraction through February. Uh, so I need to say thank you to Greg at E-Wings for uh, giving me this opportunity to build this prototype because that's what this is. This is pretty much going to be the final version. A couple of tweaks potentially, uh, but it's been a learning experience and I've been keeping Greg up to date with how the build has gone and if anything needs tweaking. Uh, originally designed by a gentleman called Ewan, the original Vortigaunt. Big differences here are the body is now the same as the Black Hawk and the wings are fractionally longer. So you've got about the same wingspan. Now I am setting mine up for endurance as I've already said. So I have made it so the wings are removable. A couple of little mods I've done to do that. I'll talk about those as we go through the video. And again, I am using a lighter weight battery in the nose. Uh, ideally, something like a 5200 4S with the normal 3D printed noses that you can download from E-Wings will get your central gravity spot on. It needs to be about 15, 20 mil maximum from the front leading edge here um, because I'm going for a lighter battery because ultimately I want lithium ion because it's kind of a more of an endurance bird. I've got the Black Hawk for flying it like I stole it. Uh, it does mean I'm going to have to put some weight in the front. I'm still waiting as I'm recording this for those weights to arrive to get the center of gravity in exactly the right place. In terms of the iNav setup, uh, I'm not really going to go through that in massive detail in this series because to be honest, I've already got the iNav for the beginner series. If you're interested in iNav, go and check that out. I'm following exactly the same process to set this thing up, including all of the servo travel reversing, all that jazz. And with all of my installations, the way I've done it, and go through this in a moment, is set everything up on the bench, make sure it's all working on the bench, and then when I'm happy it's all working on the bench, transfer it into the model. Uh, also a couple of 3D printed parts on here that I have created, a little shroud for the compass so it's nice and neat, uh, the little battery hatches are on here as well, I'll put links below to anything that I'm using in here that's on my Thingiverse page. So with all that context said, let's jump into the pictures and slides, let me talk you through what I've done with the electronics so that we are um, pretty much ready to go and fly. So let me talk about all the technology that we're going to fit inside the basic shell. First of all is the HD system. It's the Cadix unit. So this is the air unit light. And I have swapped out the camera for the Pro. I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the Pro gives a similar level of performance to the original DJI camera. And I prefer that image. So while I was doing this, I thought, you know what? Let me treat myself. I'm kind of doing this for a distraction anyway. Flight controller is a Matek F405 wing, flashed with iNav 2.6. Setup is identical to the iNav The Beginner's Guide. Along with that is the Matek GPS unit. Again, links to all this stuff down in the description if you're interested. Uh, that is going to sit in the usual place for these models. I'm not going to wire up the compass. I don't need a compass on a model like this. Uh, see my video on why do I need a compass for why that's the case. And the last thing I'm going to put in here is the Matek buzzer. It's great at getting confirmation of things like when the GPS is locked, which is handy because I'm going to be using the DJI FPV controller rather than my Radio Master or Tyrannus, so I won't have the benefit of my iNav Lua script letting me know when I have a 3D lock. So first of all, we need to change the camera over from the original Cadix camera that came with the system to the Cadix Pro. Now all you have to do for this is if you just take the screws off the back of the camera you will find the connector. Big tip with this is do not pull on the cable to pull the connector loose. It is a friction fit. What you need to do is you can get something like your fingernail under the edge of the connector. There is a small lip and if you prise up both ends then you'll find the connector pops loose very easily. Do not use the cable to try and pull out, then you'll potentially damage the cable and you'll end up having to get a new one. I did get another cable with the camera. You can order it with and without, just in case I ever damage the cable or something happens to it. 
obviously then you need to test the camera is working okay and make sure it's bound to the goggles because the air unit light in this instance has come with the JST cable on it. It's easy for me to power it and just make sure everything is working and that before I go too much further, the camera that I've just installed, I've actually installed it properly. Next thing for me to do is to install all that stuff then into the nose that I've made. I've just got a block of foam, cut it into the right shape, and then I designed a couple of 3D, pr 3D printed pieces that would hold both the air unit light and the camera too. Now there is a 3D printed nose available to download now from E-Wings so you don't have to go through this step and that 3D printed nose is potentially a fraction heavier than this one and that will help with central gravity too. Now I've soldered the four cables onto the DJI Air Unit Lite. That's an S button ground for the signal to the flight controller from the DJI Air Unit. And there's a transmit and receive pin as well. That's going to be connected into a UART and send the MSP telemetry back into the DJI Air Unit so that I can get my on-screen display. Crimped DuPont servo connectors onto the end of those wires that I've soldered onto place on the air unit light. I can put corresponding cables onto the flight controller so it can all just plug together. Big benefit of this is because the power is unpluggable, it means that I can power the flight controller and the DJI system separately. That's handy for things like updates and flashing. And it also means that when I'm doing things on the bench with the flight controller and plugging the battery in and setting up things like servos, I don't have the DJI Air unit running away getting really hot when it doesn't have to. Next thing to do then is to prep the flight controller. The best thing I can recommend is if you're going to set one of these things up, Go onto the Maytech website for the flight controller you have, scroll down and have a look at the wiring diagrams. They are fantastic. They show you exactly where everything is going to go and that's exactly how I'm going to set it up here. UART1 is going to be used for the DJI Air Unit telemetry. I'm going to use the buzzer and GPS connections as normal and I'm going to plug them all in. Now once everything is connected then do a visual inspection, make sure that everything's right way round, use an ohm meter on the power connections. I've temporarily connected a power connection here and power everything up, connect it into iNav and do the configuration, make sure that the GPS is working and that you can see it all moving and that everything is fine. Top tip from me would be once you're happy that everything is working is take images, get, grab your phone, take images of all of the connections before you unplug things, then you'll guarantee you'll get them back in the same place, the same way around when you come to reconnect everything after it's back in the model. Now we know the basic stuff is working. I made up extension cables for the DJI power, S bus and telemetry cables and figured out where they needed to plug in onto the flight controller. I installed a battery holder and glued it in with the wooden spars that come with the kit along with one of my custom battery straps that have happy flying and my painless pill on them. Next thing to do then was to cut the recess for the ESC using my wedge method and that is where you cut around the outside of whatever it is you want to sink into the foam. Do it a millimeter or two smaller than you actually need cut to the right depth on the outside and then use your exacto knife again use a very sharp knife at an angle to then cut wedges piece by piece all the way around and then use wedges to cut out the middle and then that will get you a nice neat installation as well once i knew where it was going to sit i knew how long the cables were that i had to play with so i soldered the esc to the flight controller and the ESC to the motor as well and connected the motor onto the back of the model. With that done, then I fed through the power lead that I'd made up that's going to go into the battery bay and soldered that onto the flight controller as well and then mounted everything, including clipping cable tie in half and gluing each half either side of the ESC just to help keep it in place. I did also print and attach my 3D printed hatch retaining clips again all on my thingiverse page and also my gps around and hatch supports once that was all done then i could put the covers on the top cover them in the same kind of covering as the wings and the next big job was then to install the servos now because i need uh, the central gravity as far forward so i don't need to add tons of weight 
I'm putting my servos at the front, as far as front as I can, on the big meaty part, the thickest part of the cord of the wing. Because there isn't a specific place that they need to go, the trick that I would say is put them where it makes sense. I'm putting them uh, so they are 90 degrees up to the trailing edge. Lots of people get very emotional about whether or not you should be 90 degrees or you can have the linkages going straight back. The linkage movement on this model is very small. These are big control surfaces, so you don't need a lot of movement to do a dramatic change in attitude. So actually I could get away with just having them go straight back, but we'll have them going at 90 degrees just because that's what all the ones look like on the E-Wings website. All of the hardware to connect the Elevons to your servo come in the kit and it's using this kind of funky, minutely adjustable setup at the back where it's very, very easy to get the travel that you want. I'll talk about travel and reflex and stuff at the end. I have also heard from E-Wings that they're thinking of bringing out uh, strengthening kits for these as well. Carbon fiber rods that you can heat shrink onto them. I might get myself one of those. These are pretty long rods and they may flex uh, when I'm flying hard. Once that was all done, then I cut uh, corresponding holes in the side of the electronics bay in the body and fed through the extension cables that I've made up that are going to connect to the servo cables that go out to the servos in the wing. I also then cut a recess in the root of each wing so that that, that cable and the connector can fit flush as well. In terms of the travel and the reflex that I'll be looking for on this, because again the control surfaces are so big, I'm going to shoot for 7 or 8 millimeters in either direction, up and down. Uh, so about 16, 14, 16 millimeters total travel, 7 up and 7 down, 8 up, 8 down is about what I'm aiming for. Again, you don't need masses of movement for this. And I might give myself just a millimeter or two of reflex, i.e. the Elevons being slightly up as opposed to flat just to help with launch. However, I'm going to be using the iNav Auto Launch stuff, which will kind of sort most of that out as well. But I'd just like to make sure most flying wings do need just need a little bit of reflex to fly great. And that's pretty much where we're up to. So only a couple of last things really. Um, when you are ready to fly, I would, before you go to the field, plug it in obviously without the prop on ideally, uh, make sure that you can arm it, that it gets a GPS lock, and then it uh, saves you a bit of time when you're out in the field. Uh, the other thing I would do is enable iNav logging. Uh, this flight controller has an SD card. I'm using it with the DJI system. Uh, so I'm gonna use the OpenTX logs with things like Dashware to overlay on my footage. So hopefully I'll be able to show you that in the Maiden video as well. And the only other things then, are, uh, I possibly am going to add Velcro straps. There is the ability to sink a little piece of Velcro into the, this foam, this big piece at the back, and have a little Velcro pad under the wing. And then when the wing's in place, just push the Velcro over the top, stop it coming undone. Uh, these wings are pretty solid. Uh, the spars go a fair way in. Over time, the, uh, the channels may get a little bit looser, so I might just, while I can find some Velcro, just put a little tab either side just to stop them coming off if I'm flying uh, and doing rolls and things. Obviously, I need to add the weight to the nose. Uh, I'll tell you exactly how much it is at the end, but again, if you're using something like the larger battery, you won't have the same issue that I have, uh, but I'll probably cut slits in the side here and kind of sink uh, it into the actual foam as well as put it in here. Uh, it's better to add a small amount of weight at the maximum distance from the CG point as trying to put lots of weight to try and get it. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it as light as I possibly can. Again, in the next video I'll give you the all up final weight with that weight in the nose to get the CG in the right place. The last thing to do of course before you go out and maiden it is just make sure everything works, make sure the controls work in the right way in manual mode, that you can select everything, that the DJI system is working and that uh, everything is tickety-boo. But if you're following along with this and you've also watched my iNav for Beginner's Guide, uh, you should be about here in the same build and ready to go to the field. So join me next time where we'll do that and we'll see how this thing flies.
Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.